Hi all, before I begin, I just wanted to thank everybody who has commented on one of my videos, subscribed, liked, uh, anything you've done, especially people who have, you know, commented and, and brought some really interesting discussions and ideas um, and suggestions for books. Uh, thank you all, and I hope you will continue following this journey through reading the countries. Hello friends, welcome to Mac Truck Bookstop. Today is our first bonus episode, meaning it is the first episode in which we feature a second book from a country, which is Strange Beasts of China um, by Yan Ge from the country of China. Published in 2006, the author was only 21 or 22 years old when this was published, so um, quite young, and yet it is her most internationally popular book. Recently, um, translated and published in English, um, at least in the United States. Although the author has produced many other books, um, although I don't know that any of them are available in English. And um, it is a fantasy, somewhere in the realm of fantasy and sci-fi. I would say it leans a little bit more toward fantasy, but it takes place in more or less the modern era. It's a little bit uh, gray whether this is like an alternate reality or if um, this is like in the future of our reality. But essentially there are beasts that are living alongside humans and these beasts have different um, kind of names. Some of them are much more ephemeral than others, much harder to pin down and if, if I had to describe this book in one way, it would be ephemeral. Um, there are about eight chapters, I believe, eight or nine chapters, and each one is named after a different kind of beast. So it's kind of like a short uh, story format. Um, the beasts, my first initial thought was that they represent kind of parts of the human... Um, kind of our human nature, you know, different kind of primal emotions. They, um, many of them represent very dark emotions, kind of shadow selves of people. Uh, sorrowful beasts uh, is the first one, um, but then also kind of harder harder to define ones. And this is a translation, of course, so I, I, I think some, I do feel that some things were hard to reach through the translation. Um, or perhaps they were meant to be as vague as they are. No translation is perfect. You have like thousand league beasts. Um, and in each chapter, the narrator, who is never named by the way, um, but is a, a female who is finishing, or no, a female writer who had studied at university under a professor, who is, this professor is like a big deal in the beast world, um, and has ended up, or, or was in the field of cryptozoology, but is now a romance writer. So, it is quite a, um, uh, how do I put it? The, the narrator qu would be quite easy to confuse with the author, or you could imagine that the narrator is the author of the novel. Um, but I don't know that that's the case. Um, so I guess to sum up, what what do I feel about it? Um, the interactions with the beasts are, I guess, the central the central driving plot of each um, story. You you catch on pretty quick that in each story you're going to meet one of these beasts, and um, I, I refer to them as stories, but they're really just chapters of the whole narrative. Um, just some general thoughts about it overall. Um, I can't say that I like it, nor can I say that I dislike it. Um, much of the book, the, the book really is, made me feel very detached in, in a way that I did not, um, really emotionally connect to it, but at the same time I did find it interesting and did keep wanting to read it to the end. Um, much of the book, while it was strange, the, these beasts are strange and sometimes grotesque. There's some even like slightly 
I don't know if I want to say Lovecraftian, but like it's, uh, slightly kind of weird science moments in it. Um, the grotesque, I, I think, grotesque, I think, really captures it. Um, these moments, though, did not shock me or move me. It all uh, felt like something that I'd felt before, and um, and even kind of the darker emotional themes of it. There are, as a, I, I suppose you could take this as a trigger warning, but also just th this is something it, that recurs throughout the book. There's a lot of mention and theme of suicide and how these beasts many of the beasts um, suicide is part of their nature or um, something that happens to them as a result of their interaction with society and um, it, it is a heavy theme in this book and I don't know if that is drawn from the author's life or not or was something she was working through. Um, I was a youth once, many of us were young once very and, and I mean I guess I'm still you know relatively young it depends who you talk to right but this is when the author wrote this book for me that was 13 years ago so or 12 years ago so <laughs> so it's uh I think back to that time and I I feel that if I had encountered this book at the right time in my life it could have easily become one of my favorite books however um, at this time in my life, it's kind of like old ground that I've already treaded through, and um, I could not find deeper connections to the beasts or the stories than sort of the simple, raw, um, uh, uh, feeling that they were meant to produce, or um, emotion that they were meant to represent. Now, it could be that there are connections to, you know, ancient Chinese mythology or whatever, but I'm not sure. So, this book was very ephem ephemeral to me and very, um, I, I did not come out of it with any sort of strong emotion, but it did, it did really make me think about a lot of things. And it made me, it gave me a little sense, a little sense of nostalgia, because I thought, you know, this was written in, again, 2000, or published in 2006, and if, and coming out today, I don't think it has the same effect, now that it's finally being in the published in the United States. So much weird has happened since then, and I think this is also the problem with political satire, and why I don't enjoy political satire, is because we are living now in a world where just everything is trying to shock you, everything is trying to be weird. Um political satire, politics is already a satire of itself. Um, everything, every day is trying to be weird and get your attention and strange and shocking. And it's just, and, and it's just been there, done that. This is just the more of the kind of overflow of, uh, it, and it doesn't reach back to anything deep in our past. And even when it does, it's at such a super official level. It's just kind of a sign of the times thing. Does, do you get what I'm trying to say? I don't know if I get what I'm trying to say. Um, but I'm really wrestling with something here as a result of reading this book. So I think it did accomplish something. And it's something related to what is different now versus how I was 10 to 15 years ago and how even the world was 10 to 15 years ago. Because I do feel that not only have I changed, but the world has changed dramatically in the last 10 to 15 years in a way that it hadn't before. I guess if, the, if that makes sense. Um, but something interesting to come out of this book is I realized as I continue this project, and I it, it did help me unwind from the big tome that was the water margin. In the water margin, of course, the sprawling... Um, epic of um, of uh, 12, 13th century, 14th century China um, left me quite exhausted and I, I really needed a breather like this, something airy and, and light and reflective of the past or my past self in the younger years. I think it was a great break, a great stop for me, even though, as I said, for me, I can't say I like it nor dislike it because it was so 
much of something I'd already felt before, and I, f I feel I can't really judge it on those terms. Um, however, I do think this is the right book, could be the right book for the right person at the right time, if that makes sense, or at the right age. Um, now, what it did inform me, the, 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 the process of thinking out why this was such a strange book to me, has kind of led me to um, an idea that this project, perhaps it is better that I do not plan out the books that I'm going to read next. Perhaps it's better that I simply let this take me where it will. And seeing a book like this, Strange Beasts of China, creating these imaginary mythological creatures for our time, our time that is unlike any other, our present day, that is unlike any other that we know in history, so vastly different, you know, on an, on, on an order of scale so vastly different, um, it, it made me want to find some, uh, to, to search again for those archetypes of the past, and I remembered that I had bought, uh, some months ago, um, it's not just Jorge Luis Borges, it's also, um, and she's not credited, sadly, in this English version, Margarita Guerrero, uh, also helped him compile this, The Book of Imaginary Beings. Jorge Luis Borges and Margarita Guerrero from Argentina. And though I had planned to do something different with Argentina, I, my, my, my feelings, my thoughts, everything that this ex the experience with this book kind of kicked up has led me to searching out the imaginary beings of literature and myth and wanting to experience that through the lens of already who is one of my favorite authors, Jorge Luis Borges. This is the right time and the right place for me to explore this compendium. And it's alphabetical, and it's... I, I'm going to do something fun with it, and probably not read it in order, and I haven't figured out exactly what that is yet. But I'm following my heart, I'm following where this project is leading me, um, book to book, instead of having a road map um, of the order of countries that I'm going to hit. Um, I'm really letting it kind of fly to the wind and coming into a realization of what this project is to me and what it should be. It is a spiritual journey. It's an emotional journey. It's an intellectual journey. It's all of the above. And um, yeah, that is... That is what I have to treat it as. I put the camera in front of me and I talk about each book because the more time I were to spend editing and preparing these videos, the less time I am spending enjoying the journey and reading. And that's really what it is about. So, um, at least at the, at the time being, you know, when I come back at the end of this journey or when I, when I feel I've had enough that's when I can stop and say, okay, let's try to, let's really analyze what we've seen and, 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 uh, try to produce something a little bit more, well, produced, <laughs> but, um, again, and I, I, I hope I haven't sounded that, uh, that I'm knocking this book. Again, I, I do feel it's the right book for the right person at the right time, which was not me, but in, in some ways, in some ways, it was what I needed at the time. A breather, and a moment to reflect, and a push uh, by, its, by its very nature of being youthful, a, a youthful burst of creativity that um, is unconsciously influenced by the past, uh, and, and expressed in such kind of, I'll just say an immature, I don't mean this as an insult, but an immaturity, there's an immaturity to this book that is actually charming. Um, and, and that kind of burst of immaturity, but, but reaching for depths in the subconscious that may or may not connect to the past, we may find interesting connections in this book. There are, there are um, sections on China. This is meant to be at Borges's time of writing this book with Margarita Guerrero, uh, a... Um, 
they meant it to be a compendium of imaginary beatings of history, and it is quite... There's 118 entries in this. Most of them are quite short. Uh, I can't think of a better a better and more interesting book for Argentina at the moment than than to to go in and do this. So, um, yeah, I I'm really I'm really excited for it, and I, th I think there was something else I wanted to say, but I can't remember it. So, thank you for watching the video. I hope you've enjoyed our first bonus episode slash um, introspection, and uh, I meant to do it outside, but you know, everybody's outside everywhere, so I just didn't feel comfortable standing and talking to my phone with books in a random public place, so I just picked a church parking lot instead in my car, so <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, that's all I have. Thank you so much. Uh, I want to also thank, I should have done this at the beginning of the video, I'm, I'm going to put something in at the beginning of the video. Yeah. Thanks. We'll see you next time.